2012 has already been an amazing year for Britain and now one of Europe's biggest horror festivals is raising the bar for the UK once again. I know I say this every year but with a whopping three screens showing 50 films, Fright Fest the 13th really does look set to be bigger than ever. And this year for the first time I get to welcome my Italian evil twin Petra from our twisted sister channel Horror Italia. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Petra, how are you finding it? Uh, it's great. I love to be here. Yes. Is there anything like this in Italy? Unfortunately, not like Freifers. That's why I'm here. Hmm, well, you better brace yourself, sister, because us Brits, we like it bloody. If you're superstitious, you're in the right place. <laughs> I didn't quite know I'd be working on this sort of film. Those things out there are zombies. We're here to talk about uh... the Reich of a thousand years. It's the Hebrew word for a demon. If you get in trouble, pull the trigger. <laughs> That's how you do it. Fright Fest sees an impressive score of scary movies from all around the world, but once again, it's the bloody Brits flying the flag of fear with a dynamic mix of terror from the hilarious Cockneys versus Zombies to the harrowing in The Seasoning House. So, put your hands on your bleeding heart and be proud of your horror heritage. Having the accolade of opening this year's Fright Fest, The Seasoning House is the debut film from special effects splatter king Paul Hyatt. But as you're about to see, this film cuts far closer to the bone than mere guts and gore. A terrifying journey of exploitation and revenge. I would describe it as um, a horror film that slightly sort of bends the genre. A young girl who, during a, a Balkan war, is kidnapped from her home and sold by soldiers to a brothel keeper. And that poor girl is you. <laughs> it is, indeed. Yeah, but she's a fighter, basically. She fights her way through the film and doesn't give up without a really good fight. You know, I hope people are just, you know, drawn into the hypnotic, dreamy nature of it and then ripped into the, the second half, which is a lot more realistic and relentless and hairy. <laughs> This is an emergency broadcast. There is a viral infection spreading fast through the capital. Matthias and James, thanks for joining us here at the Horror Channel. Um, you're here with your film Cockneys vs Zombies at Fright Fest. Um, firstly, how would you describe your movie? Well, the plot is a very closely guarded secret, um, which the title does nothing to give away. <laughs> oh, my, oh, oh, it's a zombie film. And the film basically features Cockneys and zombies. Oh, don't tell them. Oh, oh that was really sad. Yeah. Man. I play an old age pensioner who has qualities of leadership. And when we're attacked by zombies, he's very good at assembling people, getting his hands on some weapons, and fighting back at the zombies. No. He's eating a foot. It's disgusting. We came up with the idea that the zombies are slow, but the pensioners are slower. It's not gonna make it. I don't think that you're gonna find a film where you see Richard Bryars and Anna Blackman with machine guns. We know where to shoot them. Spanish horror is really coming to the forefront of the industry. Films like Pan's Labyrinth, The Orphanage and, of course, Wreck are dishing up more of the sanguine stuff than ever before. And this year's Fright Fest has two must-see Spanish horror movies, Sleep Tight and Wreck 3 Genesis. It's kind of a horror comedy with a lot of romantic element involved. Well, I play Clara in the happiest day of her life. She's going to have to turn into a kind of an animal who's going to fight for her family and her lover. The notion of the, uh, the bride with the chainsaw saying, this is my day, was a great image, I thought. So I think that's been my high point so far. Day two kicked off with a whole bunch of amazing new horror titles, plus an encounter with this year's total film icon, Dario Argento. 
So, is this your first Fright Fest? It's not. I think it's about my fifth. Oh, I think. wow. You're a hardcore. Bit of a veteran. I love it. I love it. It's like Christmas to me. It's, uh... So, what films have you seen so far and what ones have stood out to you? My favourite so far is VHS um, by a mile. Okay, here's the deal. We've got to break into this house and all we have to do is steal this one VHS tape. At its basics, it's a found footage anthology movie. But I think what it does in a very progressive way is it takes found footage and uh, pushes it a little more towards fantasy, just uh, more of a celebration of pure entertainment. My own segments, it's almost an homage to the slasher genre and reference things like Jason Lives and Terror of Evil and things like that. My apartment's haunted. It's not haunted. <laughs> A bunch of scumbag criminals are hired by a mysterious third party to break into a house and find a certain VHS tape. The entire movie, we keep going back and forth to them, looking and finding a new tape, popping it in, and then we're, we're going in and out of uh, the various segments. You're all going to die up here. I can guarantee there's a lot of laps in this film. I play uh, Stitches. He's a sort of scummy children's entertainer who turns up to a kid's party and uh, they tie shoelaces together and throw a football at his head and he falls into a, a dishwasher and gets a knife through his head. And, uh, yeah, now you'd think that would be the end of the film. Oh, no. <laughs> You're watching it and you are kind of you'll be laughing and then you have to sort of stop yourself and go, oh, this is horrible. And then there's other bits where you go, oh, God, this is horrible. Ah, oh, now I'm laughing. <laughs> Depends how dark your sense of humour is. I think a lot of people will, some people will be repulsed, while other people next to them will be laughing. I think this audience will be laughing all the way through, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This year's total film icon has been described as the Italian maestro of horror. His films are at once violent and beautiful and often cite controversy. He is Dario Argento. The man once said, horror is like a serpent, always shedding its skin, always changing, and it will always come back. An enigmatic director, to say the least. My Italian colleague, Petra Loregian, met the man of the moment to find out more. Buongiorno, Dario, come stai? Bene. Tutto a posto? Sì. Bene. Come è stato avere nuovamente tua figlia Asia Argento in un film? È stato bello. I primi giorni erano emozionato di cose accidenti non me lo ricordavo più com'era così e invece poi abbiamo ricominciato la nostra vecchia collaborazione di parlare di stare sempre insieme di cenare insieme di discutere e quindi è rinata la nostra grande collaborazione da grande maestro dell'horror italiano a chi ti piacerebbe cedere un, un ipotetico scettro no io non cedo niente ben, ben stretto How did you feel when you were first informed that you were this year's total icon guest and being acknowledged in this way? I'm very happy, of course. Um, maybe significant. I do something important, something real. And what was it like being up there on stage in front of some 1,500 fans revisiting your entire career? Yes, this, this is uh, something that touched me, touch me. And on the third day, we came over all Italian. Scary. Not to mention getting some serious face-off time with a makeup man like no other. This is exactly the right environment for Greg to get this award, I think. It's fun too, you know, I mean, Simon said, said it best. We're, it's, it's all like minds, you know, having the opportunity to share with fans uh, my experiences. You know, the, the, the documentary that they screened earlier today has a lot of the behind-the-scenes footage of stuff that I'd worked on. and. It's all sitting in my office, so for people to get an opportunity to experience what it was like to be there, uh, I think is, is critical for, for genre fans. The audience goes, wait a minute, we're not in the hands of a master, we're in the hands of a maniac. You have to have an unnatural motivation to do this. What do you like about Fright Fest? Um, well, the people here, for a start, who get to meet lovely people. Um, like I bumped into Greg Nicotero earlier, who I'm a huge fan of. I didn't even know he was going to be here. The films are just great. All in all, it's an excellent lineup this year. I'm glad to have got a weekend pass for it. It starts two weeks after the end of the first one, and it's a completely different type of film. The Reich of a thousand years has not been hiding from the likes of you. Lena is the daughter of a, of a Nazi hunter who has died, and she's basically picked up his 
mission, and that brings her to the world. But she has no idea that the elements involved are spooky. Exactly. She just thinks she's going after old guys. We just kind of decided to do something that was shifting genre slightly, so it, it was still gruesome, it was still had suspense in it, but was a bit more of an action film. <laughs> films at Fright Fest this year. You must be very proud. Oh, we definitely are incredibly proud, yes. Like, there's a really a very close body contact with the fans. And we've been to a lot of festivals, but we never saw this happen so much, like here. And we like body contact, and we like especially exchanging opinion. Uh, and we like to receive compliments also, and which happens at this time. So I think, that's one of the main reasons Fright Fest is great. I think the best thing to take away from Paura is when, when they go out, I hope they go to a chemist and buy something to sleep, because I hope that without it, after Paura, it would be impossible for them to do it. Do you usually travel with so many beautiful women on your arm? Uh, yeah, I love it. That's why I, I did this film. Yeah, the story is about uh, this uh, very elegant and influent woman. Her lovers start being murdered in horrible ways. And she can't go to the police because otherwise the scandal will do her in. And so she has to deal with that by her home. Uh, and it's gonna be a nightmare. Sunday, a day of rest. Not. Everyone was there, and it was our very own Horror Channel sponsored event, the International Short Film Showcase. The Horror Channel has always supported and nurtured new talent. In this industry, the best way is to make a short film. So this year, we're proud to be the sponsors of Fright Fest's International Short Film Showcase. An intoxicating brew of murderers, maniacs, and even giant snails. And this lot are the guys responsible. It's basically about a brother and sister who are holed up in a dilapidated chapel at the end of the world in the midst of a zombie apocalypse. You haven't been bitten, have you? Oh, you donkey. Run into a tree. The premise really is the worst person to be stuck with for potentially the rest of your life is your annoying little brother. No! I particularly liked Metal Creepers and the heavy metal exploitation. That was very funny. They wanted to bring back those uh, puppet movies uh, really popular in the 80s. Gremlins, Critters, Munches, Ghoulies. <laughs> Am I missing any? Ocophobia <laughs> is fear of childbirth. And the film's about a young woman who discovers that she's pregnant and decides to take um, action that is rational in her own mind. And, uh, when you have a feature, you have time to develop a very lengthy story. And we find that shorts are a very interesting medium. You have to deliver a punch within a very minimal amount of time, and you have to get everything you want really finite down to a small, small amount. And I think that sometimes you never really need that much of a beginning or an end. You just need a sequence. I think they have to be to the point, and you have to you have to have a good actor, I think. I think that's pretty much it. My short's a very short three-minute film about a collector who uh, buys a possessed camera, repairs a camera, and then when he's repaired the camera, it kind of unlocks a, a dark, hidden terror. OK, so you're here at Fright Fest with, with a zombie film. Uh, firstly, just why go from, you know, big soap opera to independent zombie film? Is this something that's been simmering away inside you that you've always wanted to do? No, um, well, I'm a fan of zombie films, and we run the Leeds Zombie Film Festival, and, and Joe's a fan of European cinema, and we just... Joe was talking about why she hated zombie films, and I was saying why I loved them, and then we ended up the conversation coming together and working out that there was a film in there. It's about a married couple, and they basically want to patch up their, their marriage, more for the kids' sake than anything else. And they go away to the countryside, idyllic cottage. I go out for a run one morning, and I get bit oh. by a rabid, crazed, lunatic man. Well, the film's been described as a horror with heart. Um, what do you make of that, and what are they referring to? Well, I think because it, it's a character-led film. It, um, it, we, <sighs> It's not really a horror film at all. It is a horror film because it's horrible and there's some real brutal violence mm. in there and lots and lots of blood. But that's kind of by the by. It's the, it's the story, really, and what the zombies mean to the existing story. So, um, And they're a couple in love and they're a couple trying to get back together again. You know, it's just because of 
the indiscretions of one of the characters that they're not together. So it is a love story, really. Don't be afraid. A new world of sound awaits you. A new world that requires all your magic powers. The story's really simple. It's about um, a sound man from Dorking who goes to Italy in the 70s to work on a horror film and kind of regrets doing it. And within that, it's a film about horror, about work, about politics in the office. The movie is about sound. It's a tribute to sound and to, to a sort of a movie making from the 70s and era of movie making. It's no longer. Uh, that's what I loved about the movie. I guess ultimately it's, it's a celebration of um, a period in Italy when you had this amazing fusion of music and film and sound and film, which is quite, quite unique, really, in, in world cinema. How does it feel to be here uh, in London for the, for the big premiere? Such a wonderful experience, and uh, I still you know, don't quite believe it. Especially having a premiere with this project is something amazing and something incredible. The final day ended with a bang. Actors, directors, stars everywhere all day long. Because this is Fright Fest, and we don't stop till the fat lady dies. <laughs> so highlights so far, what movies have stood out? Uh, Maniac, Cockney vs Zombies. Rabbers was, was fantastic. American Mary was awesome. What's that? Dreams, yeah? Yeah. There's a new double act causing a stir in the horror industry. Their first film, Dead Hooker in a Trunk, was banned from several festivals, which made us promptly want to show it on the Horror Channel, of course. Eli Roth is one of their biggest fans. They write, star, produce, direct their own movies. They are the one and only Jen and Sylvia Soska, my new girl crush. Tell us about um, the story of American Mary. Well, it follows medical student Mary Mason as she grows increasingly broke and disenchanted by medical school and the surgeons she once admired. So the allure of easy money and notoriety sends Mary to the messy world of underground surgery and body modification, which leaves more marks on Mary's psyche than her so-called freakish clientele. She can do that drunk, too. Well, <laughs> I pitched, the first time I ever pitched it was to Eli Roth, and he stopped me halfway through, and he's like, that sucks, and it did. I was like, yeah. um... So it's about this girl, and he's like, it's never gonna get made if you talk like that. Have you ever heard of body modification? It's such an interesting, strong female character who is strange and unique and smart and just interesting. And they're very rare to find these days, especially in horror movies, where you're not just, you know, screaming victim in that. Um, I was just thrilled to be approached with this. And then once I met the girls, of course, I was like, I'm in, this is great. With Mary, we wanted her to be flawed. We wanted her to be dark. We wanted her to be at one point at the beginning and at a completely different point at the end. And then somewhere in between, it's not just like night and day, it changes, but it's a subtle change that if you look at the beginning and at the end of the film, you're like, what's happened to this girl? Jennifer Lynch comes from horror royalty, Daddy being the one and only David Lynch, responsible for Horror Channel favourite Twin Peaks. She's clearly picked up his love of the macabre with an impressive list of director credits to her own name, including boxing Helena. She's here this year with the premiere of the deeply disturbing Chained. It's about a serial killer who drives a taxi cab and uh, after picking up a fare, destroys the mother and keeps the nine-year-old boy for 10 years. It's a romantic comedy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you only eat what I have left in my plate. This is your world. From now on, it is only me, you, and them. I wanted to make the kind of horror that really scares me, um, the non-negotiable horror, the, the human monster who I cannot offer anything to. Being a mother certainly came into play with how the child is seen and treated, and as well, what the mother must do and how she behaves when she realizes it might be the last time she sees her son. What's your name? A rabbit. How long have you been here? Since I was nine. And finally, Tower Block. And how do you feel being here, kind of representing British horror to a certain extent, because you are the closing night movie? 
we're absolutely delighted. Um, we're a little shocked by it too that you know it's been so well received. We, we, we know we're really, really happy. Extremely overwhelmed by how well the film's gone down. I still can't believe it. There's only, only so many times your mum can tell you it's good. But it's kind of a horror thriller, you know. It's a thriller with a, with a, with a, with a horror at its heart. Because we didn't want to make a, a a real social statement with this film. We wanted to make a cool film that was uh, that was fun to watch, but you could still put a bit of that in there, which 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 we which we did. And... She's an unlikely hero, really. She's just a, a girl living in the tower block and quite sensitive and insecure, I guess. And then all this kicks off. Um, and it's that thing of fight or flight, how do you react? I know I'd crumble because I'm a complete wimp, um, but she kind of takes charge. This isn't just some random attack. It's nice to come in and hold a gun and be with a load of boys and be a bit kick-ass. So yeah, it was just so different to anything I'd done that I couldn't wait to do it. Another year, another Fright Fest. Next year, Fright Fest the 14th. No, it sounds a bit of a letdown after that. <laughs> well, it might be but more it will, lucky. But, we, but we, we'll it won't be. It'll be no, bigger, it better, sexier, oh, than ever. and more sexier. fabulous. Yes. We'll see you next year. It's incredible. Um, today at 8.30 in the morning, people were queuing outside, out in the cold and in the rain. I love London. I love Fright Fest. I'm in it to win it. The thing about Fright Fest is you will come here and there's British, there's Spanish, there's Chilean, there, there'll be Norwegian, Korean, you know, all kinds of stuff. That's one of the main reasons Fright Fest is great. Genre often gets kind of sidelined, and, and to be in a room where everyone is, you know, into the same thing, they know what they're talking about, it, it's great. <laughs> Cheeky. That's what we do. We geek out together. Yeah. It is first time here, love it. Fright Fest is amazing. Huge amount of fun, great stuff. Oh, amazing. I'd highly recommend it to anybody.